Good morning. Today is June 10th, 2020, and this is the Morning Breach with Scott Davis. Today is Patch Review Wednesday, which always conveniently follows Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. So yesterday, Microsoft released software patches to plug at least 129 security holes in the Windows operating system. This is marking the fourth month in a row that Microsoft has released a patch with at least 100 vulnerabilities resolved. Although 11 of the updates are deemed critical by Microsoft, none of the above addressed appear to be exploited or detailed prior to the update. So I do wanna highlight a few of the patches, including a trio of vulnerabilities in the Windows file sharing technology, or commonly referred to in tech lingo as SMB. So CVE 2020-1301 is a remote code execution bug in SMB that's been around since Windows 7 and Server 2008, which could allow an attacker the ability to execute remote code. Now, if you're still running either Windows 7 or Server 2008, these were officially decommissioned back in January of this year, and you'll find yourself not only out of compliant of pretty much every compliance regulation, but your organization's at risk because you can no longer patch those systems, so there is no update for them. CVE 2020-0796 is probably the most critical of patches, in my opinion. Again, exploiting an SMB flaw, but unlike 1301, this one does not require the attacker to be authenticated to the target's network. And with the amount of users your organization likely has working from home right now, these Windows 10 systems that are not patched pose a serious threat to those systems and your network infrastructure. So Microsoft Office also received a couple updates, uh, two flaws in Excel, CVE 2020-1225 and 1226 could be used to remotely commandeer a computer running Office just by getting a user to open a booby trap document. This likely comes from a phishing email. It's one of the most common things we see. Outside of Microsoft, even Adobe released an update for its Flash Player program, which is finding less and less users as basic HTML programming in HTML6 replicates the core functionality that Flash offered for the early internet. So that's the patches. Now it's time to run Windows updates uh, and process those updates on your local computers. Uh, for businesses, if you're not utilizing a tool either internally or externally through a vendor that can generate a report of how your systems are as far as patching, it's time to consider adding it and also getting reports generated for it. So your IT vendor should have a tool that can quickly generate those reports and automatically or regularly email that to you with what your patch status is. If they can't, then you likely wanna get a third party review of the security of your network and computers. Even computers that are working from employees' houses should show in the report, and if it's set up properly, will even update while they're off the network at their house. Uh, the tools that I've utilized will patch windows, they patch third party applications, they generate reports on demand, um, either pre-scheduled or um, or even generating alerts when systems fall too far behind in updates. So again, that's all if it's configured properly. So that's why it's important for you to ask for that report. So now that we got your systems patched, now let's take a look at some of the new cyber attacks. And I got a couple of good ones today. We're gonna start with appliance maker Fisher, Fisher and Paykel, which were attacked with the knee film ransomware, which are working with third parties to restore their systems and the ability to take and fulfill orders. Could you imagine if your system went offline and you couldn't take orders? The Australian and New Zealand beverage giant Lion had manufacturing and customer orders interrupted after a cyber attack. The press release did not indicate what happened and if it was ransomware, but as they took the precaution of shutting down the IT systems, it really leads to believe that it is likely ransomware which is the culprit. And the best one I'm gonna end with today is out of Florence, Alabama, where they were hit with ransomware 
12 days after receiving a warning of an insecurity from Krebs on Security. So on May 26th, Krebs on Security contacted the office of Florence's mayor and alerted them of a Windows 10 system on their network that was commandeered by a ransomware gang. That's good. Well, it was found that the username that the attackers had used to gain access belonged to the city's manager of information systems. Not so good. But then 12 days later, Florence Mayor Steve Hoyt had to confirm that a cyber attack had shut down the city's email system via the Doppelpamer ransomware gang and was demanding roughly $378,000. Now the city negotiated the price down to 30 bitcoins or roughly 291,000, but with 12 days notice, they shouldn't have had to pay a thing. Now the mayor also stated that four other victims of the gang were also compromised within an hour of Florence, including another municipal municipality that he declined to name. According to Steve Price, the IT manager, he indicated that the credentials were compromised in a May 6th DHL themed phishing attack and the attack occurred while they were in the middle of trying to get city leaders to approve funds for a more thorough investigation and remediation. So there's a couple things in there that are pretty serious and when you have your internal team coming to you and saying hey we've detected a breach we've detected something that's pretty serious you know, we need to bring in a third party to, you know, look this over. You really need to, uh, but more importantly, you shouldn't be doing it reactively. You know, and almost every day I mentioned, you know, getting a third party out to do, you know, a complete third party audit of your security. Uh, it's one of the things I do um, is I, come, I can come out on your site and do a complete third party audit. It takes about a day of me on site. I get all the information I need. I go back, I generate a report and I, and I give you the report. Um, you know, and then from there you find your IT vendor, you give it to your IT department and you resolve the issues. Um, the more issues you, there are, the more often I recommend, you know, getting a report like that done. But it's just knowing what your vulnerabilities are so that you're at least alleviating the percentage or reducing the percentage that an attack is going to be successful. So from patching to security training to just being aware of what your organization's risk is, I will always advocate that your organization obtains that third party review. And like I said, it, depending on what the review you know, details is how often you should have one done. So even if you're already contracting an IT vendor, obtaining a third party review should help you sleep at night and make sure you're getting what you're paying for. So if you've learned something new by watching this, please take a few seconds. It only takes a few seconds, I swear. Like it and share the video. If you want to see more episodes of The Morning Breach, please follow me, connect with me, or subscribe. And as always, thank you guys for watching and have yourself a great day.